Okay, in this video, I would be talking about the details of the, the renal tubules, okay? As in front of you is the model, the same model, showing us the different two, like the two types of nephrons. And I, I mentioned that the 85% of the renal cortex is made up of cortical nephrons, which are placed high up in the substance of cortex, while the 15% of the nephrons are lying close to the junction between the cortex and medulla, so they are known as the juxtamedullary nephrons. Why I'm mentioning this again, because when we'll discuss the tubules, you have to understand uh, there is a difference in the tubules, the level or the length of the tubule uh, in each of these types. So we'll take the, the uh, uh, this, you know, the standard. The, the renal tubule or the uriniferous tubule starts from the, vas the urinary pole of the renal carpuscle. And that is, the first part is known as the proximal convoluted tubule. Why it's known as proximal? Because it's in close proximity with the glomerulus. In relation to the glomerulus, we call it proximal convoluted tubule. Why it is known as convoluted? Because you can see over here, there are like spaghetti, you know, um, entwined with each other. It's the, the, the convoluted part of the tubule. The, the proximal convoluted tubule has been, uh, for descriptive purposes, is divided into two parts. Parts or pars, okay? The part is known as pars. So there is a pars convoluta, which is the highly tortuous region, and a pars recta, which is the straighter region. This pars recta of the proximal convoluted tubule of a regular cortical nephron will continue itself down into the substance of medulla. So it sometimes is also known as the thick limb of the loop of Henle. Why? Because it's been followed by a hairpin-like hairpin loop. That's known as loop of Henle. That's the second region of the renal tubule. So the proximal convoluted tubule has a pars convoluta, which is lying close to the glomerular, uh, glomerulus or the renal corpuscle, and a pars recta, which is descending down into the substance of medulla. Then there is a loop of Henle, which is a hairpin loop, and it's very thin. So this loop, as you can see, has a thick limb thick descending limb, which is nothing but the continuation. It's actually the pars recta of the proximal tubule. Then there is a descending thin limb of loop of Henle. Okay? Then there is a loop itself, the U-bend. Then a small, thin, ascending limb. And then there is a thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle. This thick ascending limb is continuing itself back into the cortex and reaching again, not that much close to the glomerulus, but of course in the proximity of glomerulus. So this is the distal convoluted tubule. So if we look at the distal convoluted tubule or DCT, it's ha it is having pretty much the similar you know, configuration with the pars convoluta, which comes later. So there is a pars recta, of the distal convoluted tubule, which is the continuation of ascending thick limb of loop of Henle. The pars recta of distal tubule, and then there is a pars convoluta. And you can appreciate the fact, over, even over here, that the distal convoluted tubule's pars, pars convoluta is not that much tortuous. Here, I want you to appreciate the difference between the loops of Henle of the two types of nephrons. This is a typical cortical nephron with a short loop of Henle, reaching just at the outer zone of the medulla, which is close to the cortex. Here is a typical juxtamedullary nephron, and that is having a very long loop of Henle. 
It has a very long, thin descending limb. Then there is a U-bend, and then there is a very long, thin ascending limb. And then there is a thick ascending limb, which continues itself as the pars recta of distal convoluted tubule. These long loops of Henle of 15% juxta medullary nephrons are mainly responsible for the production of concentrated urine. Because the medulla is the region where a lot of water reabsorption will be taking place. So this, the, the deeply placed long loop of Henle of juxta medullary nephrons will be responsible for the production of concentrated urine. And you can see that the collecting ducts, they are receiving multiple nephrons, and then many collecting ducts are joining to form a large collecting duct, which is the duct of Bellini, and that would be opening up into the area cribrosa of renal papilla. Okay, now I'm going to flip this model to show you the details, the internal details, because each segment or each region of the renal tubule is playing a different role in the formation of urine, in the process of formation of urine. That's why the internal lining or the epithelial lining of each region varies from the other. It's different. So I want to show you how the cells are arranged. So I'm flipping the model. So you can look at, you know, the, the different regions of the adrenal tubule and a cross section through that region. So for example, the proximal convoluted tubule, as I've mentioned that it's the first part of the renal tubule, and that will be receiving the ultrafiltrate from the glomerulus. Maximum absorption or reabsorption has been taking place in this region, and a lot of substances will be excreted or secreted into the newly formed urine. Okay, so obviously these cells are performing a lot of functions. So the lining or like if you section the tube and look at the lumen, the, the lumen of the proximal convoluted tubule is lined by tall columnar, tall uh, cuboidal cells. And these cells are having a very peculiar appearance of like they are having on the apical end of all the cells, there are microvilli present creating a brush border appearance. So if we section through a proximal convoluted tubule, a very hallmarking feature, which is not present in the distal convoluted tubule, would be the presence of brush border. This brush border is a fuzzy looking line in the, you know, covering or it's surrounding the lumen. Why it is there? Because we need a lot of surface area available for reabsorption. So the proximal convoluted tubules lumen would be slightly like smaller as compared to the distal convoluted tubule because of the presence of these brush, this brush border. Then if you look at the distal convoluted tubule, which is this pars recta, it's, it's again lined by the cuboidal cells, a simple cuboidal epithelium, but there is hardly any brush border present because there is not much reabsorption taking place in the region of distal convoluted tubule. It's mainly a lot of, you know, substances are secreted into the lumen and they are adding into the urine. So the cells of distal convoluted tubule are responsible for production of certain substances. That's why if you further analyze each cell on an electron microscope level, you will find that they're, they are laden with mitochondria because they are actively producing and releasing certain substances into the urine. Here we are left with the loop of Henle. The loop of Henle is very thin and it's present mostly in the medulla. It's like almost always present in the medulla. It never climbs up to the cortex. And in the medulla, the concentration gradient is different from the cortex. Here, the, the, the lumen or the lining of this uh, loop of Henle is 
uh, simple squamous epithelium. Okay, because a lot of, the, like it's permeable to water, sodium and water, okay? So that I told you that long loops of Henle of juxtamedullary nephrons, because they are lying long and deep into the substance of medulla, so they would reabsorb water a lot, okay? Will be responsible for production of concentrated urine. Now, if we talk about, if you look at this cluster, of spaghetti. This is the Bowman's capsule, and inside is the glomerulus, and you, you call it the renal corpuscle, and surrounding the renal corpuscle, like it's been encased by the distal and proximal convoluted tubules. As the proximal convoluted tubule is highly convoluted, more than distal, there would be a you know a sort of a seven is to one ratio if we if we take a section through the kidney and we are looking at the cortex of a kidney we will find seven sections through proximal convoluted tubule and then one section through distal convoluted tubule 